We've just launched best jobs in the world. We launched it first of all in London a few days ago. We're now here at ITB, the world's biggest trade show, to tell the distribution system about it. The reaction's been huge. In less than 48,000, um, 100,000 18 to 30 year olds have applied for the six best jobs in the world. It's a huge beginning. Uh, it's got a lot more to come. How did you come up with the, the different jobs with the different tourist boards? Did they all kind of put through a few ideas and you just did a bit of a brainstorming session? In terms of uh, coming out with the jobs, we worked with each state and territory and they've really picked a job that goes to the heart of what they're great at. So in WA it's about food and wine. Um, you know, in Victoria it's about the lane, the laneways and fashion and photography. Um, in New South Wales it's about festivals and events. You know, it's about uh, uh, Kangaroo Island in South Australia. It's about being a park ranger in Queensland. So each state and territory said, what are we great at? In the Northern Territory it's about the outback. And then how do we create a job around that real brand strength? Did you magically do this this week with the record inbound arrivals numbers that came out this week as well too? The inbound numbers are great and as you know, and I've been at, at this uh, in my role for three years, I really think that the Australian tourism industry has seen a great bounce back and a turnaround, largely led by Asia, China number one, but um, Indonesia, India, Malaysia, Singapore, all growing, the Kiwis growing, and the, the best news in those figures was the return to growth of the US and the return to growth of Japan. We have a flat Europe slightly growing and a UK that's a bit down. But I think this year in the UK, British and Irish Lions rugby tour, followed by an Ashes cricket series, we have a lot to look forward to in the UK as well. It's certainly a great year to have the UK numbers go back up, isn't it? It really is. I think what we're seeing now is, you know, with Asia continuing to grow and the return to growth of these other more traditional markets, I think Australian tourism is in good place. The other big numbers, of course, were domestic. We had, uh, we've had six straight quarters of growth domestically. So, look, it's a lot better place to be in the tourism industry in Australia than perhaps it was three years ago. Now, you're over here obviously talking about the, the best jobs in the world, but I uh, actually be at the same time. Tell us a bit about what's happening in terms of you getting uh, much interest in terms of groups and business travel, that kind of thing as well? Yeah, while we're here, ITB is the biggest trade show of its kind in the world, so the people you meet are unbelievable. And our main target audience is really boomers globally, and the interest in travelling to Australia is, is rich and ripe again. They're reporting great strong forward bookings, um, and the airlines are very full, as you probably knew when you, when you were trying to come up here. So we have more air capacity, um, a lot more competition, fares are low, and I think Europe and the UK in particular think that austerity has finally got boring and they're travelling again. So we're seeing good numbers. Business events and leisure travel are growing again out of this market. Which, which of the top countries uh, out of Europe at the moment for Australia? We had Germany was doing quite well last year and even Italy was shining quite nicely. Is yeah. it a similar case for 2013? It really is. The number one European market for us is Germany and it grew a couple of percent last year. The Italians have come back in big numbers. The French have really grown. French um, over the last three or four years have really grown for Australia. But Switzerland, the Netherlands, Scandinavia and of course across the water uh, the UK is still our third biggest market by volume and we hope this year is going to be a great year for the UK. Do you attribute a lot of the growth to social media to a degree? Look, I think we've seen great partnerships with airlines in particular, um, great cooperative marketing campaigns. I think our campaign's doing well. There's nothing like Australia's really resonating. The industry can work with it, and that's the key. Campaigns are only good in our sector if partners can work with them, and that's been great. And there's a real motivation around Australia again, almost a renaissance, and people are seeing with a fair bit of passion that it's worth selling. There's been a third component to the trip this week. You've obviously had a few of your team members at the investment, the Hotel Investment Forum earlier this week. What kind of feedback did, did they give you when uh, you got a bit of a rundown from them? Look, as you know, Australia's capital cities are running at the highest occupancies in the OECD. We've seen huge rev par growth. So there's a lot of interest in either acquiring, purchasing, but more and more interest in actually brownfields and even greenfields development. So we've been talking to some of the major hotel companies in the world, also here in Berlin. It's a great time to be here. And there's genuinely interest. Look, the main interest for these people is places like Latin America and Asia. But Australia is seen as a stable, safe, and growing investment opportunity, and we're putting many of those sorts of uh, development proposals in front of them, and there is interest. The biggest challenge for 2013 for you in your job would be the higher dollar, I imagine? Look, the dollar, I think, is a new norm and hasn't stopped us from growing in recent times. Look, I think the biggest challenge remains this. You know, if you walk around ITB, there are 250 national tourism organisations trying to get the same visitors as us and spending as much, sometimes more money. So it's an incredibly competitive world and I think that remains our biggest challenge. Are you confident 
when you see countries like the US and they have the big rebound for the travel industry over there on what, what can be done and getting more Americans travelling? Yeah. Look, I do think um, in terms of competitors, places like the US have become really strong. South Africa, uh, each European nation in Asia, Korea, etc. In terms of the travelling public, yes, we're seeing the Americans just get more confidence. The, 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 the midterm, the election's out of the way, their economy is coming back and they're travelling again and that's great news for Australia. Ellen DeGeneres up next now, don't we? Yeah, Ellen's coming over, she'll do Melbourne and Sydney and that'll be fun. All that publicity is great publicity. I mean, in a globally competitive world, being talked about is hard enough but being talked about often when you're Australia is a really difficult challenge and that's why the campaigns that we run, the things we do, are really about keeping us top of mind. And uh, what would your message be to industry back in Australia watching this, um, seeing what you're doing over here? What's your message to them about getting behind all of your campaigns at the moment? The message is that we're really trying to speak with one voice. Um, Australia as a collective is a powerful notion. In the world of media where consumers bring into them what they want, the words tourism and Australia are hugely powerful words. So the more Australian operators can line up behind it, the better it is for us all. As they say, as the waters rise, all the boats float, and that's our real concept around the One Voice, uh, the One Voice initiative.